That's me, Lance. I tie flies and am the creator of this channel. For some reason there are mixed feelings about tying and fishing worm patterns, which has always kind of confused me. A worm is just as much a part of a fish's diet as a damselfly nymph, a stonefly, or a mayfly, or even minnows. So the question I pose to you is, why do some fly fishermen, or tires for that matter, look down on worms? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't already guessed, today I'm tying five, count them, one, two, three, four, five worms for high water situations. If you love to tie fun flies or are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to stay updated to new content. That's me, and this is my vise. UV wand will be the first worm coming from my vise today. The hook used to tie the UV wand is a size 1 aught Gamagatsu split shot drop shot. Once the hook is locked in the vise, wrap 45 wraps of .010 lead wire around the shank and break or cut the lead tags from the hook. After centering the lead wire on the shank, dart a bobbin of hot pink UTC 140 at the front of the fly and cut the thread tag from the fly once the thread has been secured to the shank. Continue wrapping thread around the shank in front of the lead, building a taper that reaches the level of the lead from the shank. I find that squeezing the lead at the rear of the fly as I create this taper helps keep the lead from sliding down the shank and spreading apart. After the front taper has been created, continue squeezing the lead wire at the back of the fly and gently press in towards the front of the fly as the thread is wrapped over the lead and down to the last wraps of lead wire. When the thread reaches the back of the lead wraps, cut about a 6 inch piece of 30 pound fly line backing. Put a tip of the fly backing that was just cut behind the lead at the back of the fly and secure it to the near side of the hook with tight wraps of thread. Wrap the thread around the backing and the hook until it reaches a bit more than halfway down the bend of the hook and taper the wraps of thread up to behind the lead wire. Once the back taper has been completed, wrap the thread up the shank and to behind the eye of the hook. Tie a half hitch onto the hook with the thread. After hanging the bobbin from the bobbin cradle, rotate the fly and wrap the backing up the shank to a bit behind the eye of the hook and use thread to tie off the backing. Then without cutting the thread, carefully cut the excess backing from the fly and cover the exposed backing with thread. After a small head of thread has been created, throw a whip finish to the head of the fly and cut the thread. Now use a bodkin to apply a bit of head cement to the head of the fly. The worm still needs a clitellum, so restart the thread at just in front of the hump of the hook. Cut the tag of thread after it has been secured to the fly and continue wrapping a few more wraps of thread until a small band of thread has been created. Take a bit of red UV ice dub from the pack and twist it to the thread. Then wrap the dub thread over the band of thread that was just created. Now that the clitellum has been created, apply a bit of head cement to the thread and whip finish the thread at the front of the dubbing, then cut the thread. This is a weighted UV wand. The hook used for this San Juan worm is a size 14 Umqua U202. Wrap 15 wraps of .010 lead wire around the shank, then break the tags from the shank. 
After the lead wire tags have been broken from the fly, center the lead wire on the hook and start some red UTC-70 at the front of the fly. Once secured, cut the thread tag away from the fly and continue wrapping the thread down the hook around the lead wire and to the bend of the fly. When thread reaches the bend of the hook, wrap it back to behind the eye, making sure that any exposed lead wire is covered on the way up. Next, cut a few inches of Wapsi Standard Red Ultra Wire from the cardboard. Lay the cut chenille along the top of the fly so that about half of the chenille is hanging over the front of the fly and the other half is flowing over the back of the fly. Then using a couple pin traps, secure the chenille to the top of the fly. Continue securing the chenille to the top of the fly with touching wraps of thread until the thread reaches the bend of the hook. I find that pinching the chenille to the top of the hook helps ensure the chenille stays on top of the fly as it is tied down. After the chenille has been tied down to the bend of the hook, wrap the thread back up the shank, covering most of the chenille that was missed on the way down. Using a bodkin, apply a bit of head cement to the thread, then lift the front of the worm and place a whip finish on the fly and cut the thread. After the thread has been cut from the fly, trim the chenille ends to a desired length. I like them to be about an inch long on a size 14 hook. Now using a lighter, singe the chenille tips of the fly by waving the flame to and from the chenille tips until the tips are barely singed. Then apply a coat of clear Kirigu Hydro to the phytellum of the worm and blast it with a UV light. This is a San Juan worm. To tie a Scormy Wormy, place a size 14 Umqua U202 hook that has a 1 8 inch bead on it into the jaws of the vise and start some red UTC 70 thread behind the bead. Once the thread is secured, cut the tag from the fly and wrap the thread to the bend of the hook. Then cut a strand of squirmy material in half and line it up so it is centered along the hook shank. With flattened thread and two light pin traps, secure the material to the shank. If the thread wraps are too tight, they will cut the squirmy material, so it is important to use just enough tension to keep the material on the fly. After the squirmy material has been secured to the shank, gently pull up the tail end of the squirmy and put two wraps of thread over the hook and under the material of the fly, and then put two more wraps of thread over the hook and under the material, but this time in front of the squirmy material. Once the squirmy material has been secured to the shank, wrap the thread to behind the bead. Now, wrap the squirmy material around the shank until it reaches the bead. Then tie the squirmy material off on the fly. After the squirmy has been tied off, whip finish the fly and cut the thread. Then trim the squirmy material to length. This is a squirmy wormy. Feed a size 12 fire hole 637 to the jaws of the vise to start a chamois worm. And wrap a dozen wraps of .010 lead wire around the shank. After breaking the wire tags from the fly, center the wire on the hook and begin some red UTC 140 thread at the front of the fly. 
making sure that all the lead wire is covered with thread, wrap the thread down the shank, over the lead wire, and to the bend of the hook. For this chamois worm, I am using a strip of chamois that I have dyed red, but any chamois strip will work. Cut the chamois strip to about 3 inches and center it along the shank of the fly. Pinch the chamois to the hook at the bend and secure it to the hook with 5 or 6 tight wraps of thread. Once the chamois has been secured to the hook, lift the chamois from the front of the fly and wrap the thread back up the shank to an eye length behind the eye. With the thread hanging in the front of the fly, lay the chamois back down on the fly and pinch it just behind the eye of the hook. Secure the front of the chamois to the shank with a couple of tight wraps. Now release the fly and tightly wrap four or five more wraps of thread around the chamois and the hook. After the chamois has been completely secured to the hook, apply a bit of head cement to the thread hanging right below the fly with a bodkin. Then lift the front of the chamois up and whip finish the worm with a couple three turn whip finishes on the bare shank and cut the thread. This is a chamois worm. The final worm coming from my vise today is a pig sticker. And like the UV wand tied earlier, the pig sticker utilizes a Gamagatsu split shot drop shot hook. To help weight the pig sticker, wrap 25 wraps of .020 lead wire around the shank. Then either cut or break the tags of lead wire from the shank. Once the lead wire has been centered on the hook, begin some red UTC-140 thread at the front of the hook. After the thread has been secured to the shank, cut the thread tag away from the fly. Pinch the lead wire on the hook and using flat wraps of thread, build a taper that builds up to the lead wire. To flatten the thread, counterspin the bobbin as it hangs from the fly. When the thread cords up again, repeat the counterspinning. Now that the front taper has been created, Continue pinching the lead wire on the hook as flat wraps of thread are wrapped over the lead wire and to the bend of the hook. Pinching the wire will help the wraps of lead stay butted against each other. Release the lead wire as the thread reaches the back of the lead wire wraps. Once the thread reaches just past the lead wire, grab a spool of silver brassy ultra wire and cut about a 6 inch strand from it. Take the point of the strand and place it against the lead wire on the near side of the hook. Then with tight wraps of thread, secure the ultra wire to the shank. Continue securing the wire to the near side of the shank until it reaches roughly 80% down the bend of the hook. Now that the wire has been tied in, use flat wraps of thread to create another taper that tapers from the shank up to the lead wire. After the rear taper has been completed, use flat wraps of thread to go over the entire fly, covering all the lead wire, making sure the thread wraps are nice and smooth. Verify the fly has a nice taper to it, that it starts out thin at the back of the fly, then levels out over the lead, and then smoothly tapers to the eye of the hook. If it doesn't, use thread wraps to fix it. For the ribbing, I will use the rotary function of my vise, so I'll throw a half hitch into the thread and rotate the fly as the rib is wrapped with 12 to 14 evenly spaced wraps of wire around the shank. When the ribbing reaches behind the eye, tie it off with a few tight wraps of thread and pull down on the bobbin as the excess wire is helicoptered off the fly. Then build a small head of thread and whip finish the pig sticker with a couple three turn whip finishes and cut the thread.
After the thread has been trimmed from the fly, coat the pig sticker with some clear cure goo hydro or other UV glue and then blast the fly with a UV light. You can also use Sally Hansen's hard as nails, but it will take longer to dry. This is a pig sticker. Worms are fun to tie and fish love them. So again, I ask you, why do some fly fishermen or tires for that matter look down on worms? Let's discuss in the comments below. If you enjoyed this demonstration of me tying these five worms, check out my worms playlist at the top right or let YouTube decide on something from my channel by selecting the video below that. Don't forget to like Fishbait's Flybox on Facebook or to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching. Now go feed your vice.